Hey everybody, Mark Spectre Comics, and I'm back. This time I want to do something different, uh, something kind of special. I uh, was recently able to find one of my original um, collections from when I was a kid. If you guys want to see what this is, stick around. All right, so welcome back. Um, I want to thank everybody for recently subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you don't know already, I do have my Road to 500 subscriber contest ongoing. So uh, if you haven't already checked that out, uh, please do. It's a pretty easy um, way to get a you know contest entry. And, and um, like I said, check that out if you haven't had a chance. And if you're just watching this for the first time on my channel, um, please feel free to subscribe if you like the content. So, um, if you watched any of my previous, uh, like, origin videos, I uh, talked a little bit about how uh, comic collecting was not my first thing I got into. And it wasn't only until uh, recently, maybe like the last five or six years, that I started getting into, um, getting into comics. You know, I didn't have them when I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid, I was mainly into... Um, playing video games, um, and then I started collecting sports cards and pogs. Yeah, do you guys know what pogs are? <laughs> um, and then I got into um, uh, more, more trading cards, and then more specifically like uh, Pokemon cards before I you know, stopped collecting those and got into uh, comics later on. Um, so it wasn't until recently, like maybe the last year, year and a half, where um, like Pokemon cards were like going through the roof. And I almost like gave these things away, like I want to say about six, seven years ago. And um, I was like scratching my head. It's like, where did I put these things? And, um, and then yesterday, I found them at my parents' house in the basement. I've been looking for these things for years. So um, the uh, big, like, OG collection I have here, I finally found yesterday. And these were original Pokemon trading cards from, like, the mid-90s, late-90s, something like that. And they're, like, worth a lot of money. I, I didn't know that these things were worth anything at all. I thought they were just, like, printed paper cards, you know, because... We all saw what happened to the um, sports cards. Those things tanked. Um, a lot of the stuff in the 90s, including comics, tanked quite a bit up until recently. Pogs. Nobody even has Pogs anymore. Beanie Babies. You name it. They all like pretty much tanked. But then, um, you know, like I said, I nearly gave these things away if, like five, six years ago. And then I ended up finding a box full of... Pokemon cards. So this is like opening up like an old like treasure chest. Like it's been like in a time capsule for like 15, 20 years, you know. I honestly I forgot what's in here. So I know this is a little different than what I uh, usually do for the channel. This is mainly a comics um, related channel, but I do like to do, you know, a little bit of collectibles. I like to do a little bit of, it's a little bit of everything. So, um, if you do like Pokemon cards, you know, this will probably be way up your alley because these are my original Pokemon cards. Um, I just want to know what to do with them. Do I just, like, give them away? Do I grade them and sell them? Uh, or just sell the whole collection? Because I don't really have any interest in them anymore. I, I could use the revenue to uh, help grade, you know, books, comic books. Cause that's my thing now. So let me know, um, let me know if these things are worth anything. They may, you know, some of them, like I said, these are old. These are like 15, 20 years old now, you know. So uh, we'll go through some of these. Like I said, I haven't seen these in a very long time. I have essentially almost a full shoebox full of cards. So um, let's go through these. Let's see if there's any cool cards. No, there's not going to be no uh, holographic Charizard card. I think that card's worth like $55,000 plus or something like that in a PSA 10. Um, but there is some cool shiny cards in here. There's some rares, some very commons, and, and so forth. So, um, 
got a lot of these. I even have some of the original Japanese cards too. But we're going to go through them. You know, this could be a lengthy video. This is essentially my original Pokemon collection. And you can see, these are still, I have these in bags. I just put them away. So, it's going to be, you know, maybe condition sensitive. I don't know. Um, but we'll go from there. These seem to be all trainer cards. So, I've got a bunch of trainer cards, you know. Show some of them off that are worth mentioning. The commons I won't show off, but there's a lot of like, I found out over the, just just recently, just from doing research that um, uh, there's little like knickknacks on some of these cards that make them errors or rares or whatever. But um, let me know if some of these are worth anything. They may not, they may be worth like a buck, but I know some of these rare cards can be worth thousands graded. Um, and I don't know what grading goes for for these things, but I'll just start showing them and go from there. I'll pass. So there's like little little um, indicators here on the on the left corner. You'll see like a circle. That's a common. A diamond will be um, a little bit less common, and then the star being the rare. And then there's like variants and stuff like that. So. Uh, I'll start going through these. These are, I think, all my trainers. So here's a cool one. And I must have thought this was cool back in the day because I have this in a plastic bag. So this is from the Rocket Packs. And this is, here comes Team Rocket. It's a trainer. And then you can see there on the bottom right there, there's a star. So this is considered a rare trainer. How rare? I don't know. So these are going to be cool. This is from the second set, the second base set. This is a scoop up trainer, also considered a rare. So I'm just going to keep on going through these. I'm going to go rather quick unless this is something huge. Um, but let me know. Let me know if you guys collected um, Pokemon cards back in the day or any like obscure stuff that you guys collected that. Uh, this is pretty cool. Here we go. A trainer from the base set original is a, a rare. Like I said, these are all, uh, I have these in plastic sleeves. A devolution spray is a rare. Oh, cool. A Pokemon breeder. Another scoop up. Um, and I, I used to play these when I was a, when I was a kid. They were used to be like at the uh, Toys R Us, they would have competitions, believe it or not, back in the day. I'm sure they still do today. I have no clue because I know there's ongoing uh, uh, like games today. Probably not now because of the pandemic. They probably uh, were doing it up until then. But um, yeah, they used to do them at like Toys R Us. That's where I did them here in, uh, in New England. And um, I'm sure they had them in other locations. But um, you would play against other people and you'd have like a, a colored set, whether it was fire, you know, water, grass, electric, and you would battle somebody and then you'd get coins and move on to different levels and you can actually get different prizes and stuff. This is actually a Japanese common card. And then they look a little different versus the, um, the American base sets. So that's how you know, they would say pocket monsters. But these are all commons. So that's the trainer set. So that's pretty cool. Not too bad. Got a few uh, a few rares in there. So I'll bag that back up and um, go on to the next set. So like I said these I hadn't I haven't seen in like a very long time. So this is like almost opening up like an old like treasure chest and finding out you have like all these cool like you know, amazing Spider-Man books or like Batman books that are like from the Bronze Age and shit like that or Silver Age. So that's pretty neat. This is, uh, go to the next, next little section here. I got some in a package. Got some, uh, not packaged up. Oh, these are actually, okay. So these are first editions. First editions from, I'm guessing the Jungle series and where you can tell from that, 
they'll say right there first edition and then you'll have the uh, right there first edition and apparently there's like a gray first edition so it'll look because this is pretty black but then there'll be like a lighter version and they call that like the gray first edition so it's like a minor error and then you got your indication of what the set is this is the the uh, jungle set because it has the leaf so uh that's an executor this is considered uh uncommon because it has the diamond there so these are all first editions from what it seems like here's your uh first edition jungle pikachu and it's a common because it has the circle and I actually have three of these from what I've seen so far. These are all commons I'm going through. So, um, like I said, these are all first editions, but um, are fairly common. So I'm just gonna keep on going. This was one of my one of my more favorite. You got the Charmeleon. Pretty cool. These are all from the base set. Um, a first edition Fero, another one that's kind of like uncommon, but I don't think these are worth much of anything. Uh, there you go, cool little, uh, cool little Squirtle, not in first editions, but um, and then here's a, a base set. Nope, not base set, sorry. This is the uh, Jungle Pack. This is a rare Pidgeot. Non-holographic. Non so I got some cool, cool cards in there. All right. And these are all in still very nice condition considering they've just been sitting in a shoe box. So I'll put these aside and I'll open up the, um, the bag. See what else is in here. Oh, these seem to be like all electric cards. All right, so uh, got a bunch of uh, Pikachus. One, two, three, four. A ton of Pikachus, actually. And they got a few different kinds. Fossil, 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 and then base set. Here's uh, an electrode from the base set. Non holographic, but it's a rare. So that's pretty cool. Um, you got, oh, here you go. Here's a Team Rocket first edition uh, Dark Electrode. There's the second base set, Pikachu. These are all commons. Voltorbs, Lieutenant Surges, Magnemite, first edition. Oh, here you go. You got some promos right here. Some uh, promo, promo Pikachus. And you can see there, it says promo on it. Oh, nice. Check this out. Here is a Magneton. Magneton from the second base set, holographic. There's a rare. You got some more Pikachus and then a whole ton of energy cards. So I must have piled these together back in the day for all electric. So that's pretty cool. The big hit there was probably the uh, this uh, Magneton or Magneton. I don't know how you call this thing. And um, like I said, these are all fairly condition sensitive when it comes to value. I couldn't tell you what, how to grade these things for the life of me compared to like comics. Comics is much easier to grade. These is very minute things on here that will knock points off. Just pretty funny. Um, and it's a very similar grading platform from comics to cards. And a lot of these big uh, companies like Beckett, um, CGC, which recently got into the uh, card collecting game, PSA, they all grade on a scale of zero to 
to 10. The difference is once you get to a nine, it's considered mint in the card collecting um, uh, game versus the comics, a nine is considered VF near mint. Um, and then uh, a 10 is a gem mint. So uh, here, going into another section here, these are more fossils. And, uh, oh, what's this? This is different. So I'll put the one in the middle. All right, so this is, a, I've never seen this before. Maybe this is something common. So you got the typical base set or the base background, which is this yellow. And then I have two of these bronze-ish looking colored uh, outer side backgrounds. So I don't know what that means. If that's something, a printing error or what the case is. But um, that's different. All right. Those may be the only two I have in, those, in that color. So uh, moving on, they got, oh, got more Pikachus. Jeez, these Pikachus are super common. Um, going through, I always like these um, psychedelic Pokemon. This is a Kadabra. I always like these. I like the um, Abras, Kadabras, the Mews, Mewtwo's, Alakazams, all these. Here's another one, the Jinx. I always like these. These characters are always pretty cool. Um, so going through, and then these big, the power ones too, like Machoke, Machamp, and Machop. So uh, let's move it on. It's a funky looking card, Porygon. <laughs> but, uh, oh, here you go. Here's another, here's an Abra. Pretty cool. Going through all these, these are all pretty commons. And I'll uh, point these out if I uh, see anything valuable or potentially valuable. All right. So now I'm going to get into my next stack of cards. And uh, actually, these are pretty cool because these are like the psychedelic cards or whatever. I, I don't know what stage this is called, but this was a pretty neat uh, Mew promo card. Don't remember how they got what the uh, origin behind these were, but I got three of them here. Um, and they actually say promo there on the side, right where my finger is. So that's pretty cool. I know back in the day, a lot of people were waiting for these Mew and uh, Mewtwo cards to come out. So that's pretty neat to see that back here in the collection. Um, going on to the next stack. All right, let's grab this big stack here in the middle and see what we have next. Like I said, there's a ton of cards. So I'll start with this. It actually says uh, grass on it. So I'm anticipating to see a lot of green cards. <laughs> Uh, so let's see, we got a lot of commons here. We got some, uh, some Ekans fossils. Oh, and then an Ekans rocket version. There you go. Uh, your Grimer, Oddish. These are a little different designs. So I liked about, as they went on later on in the series, they had, uh, different illustrations of the same characters. So those are pretty cool. You got some uh, fossil scrambled eggs. Oh, here's a rare. Here's um, a pincer, non-holographic from the second base set. A bee drill um, from the, I think, original set. No, no, this is the second base set. This is from the original because it didn't have the symbol there. I'm thinking, I don't know. Um, going on, some Butterfreeze, some Executors, more scrambled eggs, a lot of the, uh, this is a different card. I'm not sure what uh, pack this is from. This has the white stars here, but this is a common card. This is a Bloom, or Gloom. Here's a 
original Japanese one. It is a cool one I haven't showed off yet. Bulbasaur. Nice. Like I said, I'm just scrolling through quickly because a lot of these are very common and they're all repeats. Uh, just trying to see if there's any cool, shiny, good stuff in here or anything that's rare. Uh, some Zubats, and then those are all energy cards. All right, so nothing really big there. A couple of, uh, like I said, a pincer and uh, non hollow. Right, so I'm trying to go through these pretty quickly because there is a lot. I collected a lot of these when I was a kid and it was, you know how easy it is to uh, buy these packs. I think these packs were only like two, three bucks when they first came out. And it's just like, you know, when you're out there going to buy comics and you're in there chasing for the, uh, the big prize, you know. Oh, snap. This must be the big stuff right here. Holy crap. All right, starting off with a non-hollow Snorlax. This thing looks like it's in pretty nice condition. Oh, here we go. Fossil um, hollow Hypno. Very nice. This one suffered from a little bit of warping. As you can see, it's curved. Uh, Funny question, maybe. I don't know if this... Can you press cards? <laughs> maybe somebody can answer that. I don't know if you can press these, but that's a little warped. And the same thing with this one, but reverse warped. And this is another re, uh, hollow Hitman, Hitman Lee from uh, the Fossil, Fossil Collection. That's pretty cool. I always like these uh, kicking... Uh, uh, Pokemon. You got Hitmonlee, Hitmochamp, I think. And you got Machoke, Machamp, all those cool characters. Oh boy, here we go. Here's a big card right here. This is a big card right here. This is from the original base set. This is a Venusaur. That is awesome. I remember, I remember this card when I was a kid, but I didn't think this was still here. So this is huge and the uh, I guess what, what could I could compare it to I guess in the comics you could compare this to like maybe uh, an ASM 300 or an ASM 129 this is this is a huge card uh, so and this looks like it's in and it, uh, see I knew it, this isn't like a harder plastic too I'm gonna take this out Wow you know it's not a perfect grade because there is a little bit of scratching here on the hollows as you can see but this thing is beauty it's a beauty right here wow this would probably be one of the cards i will send out for grading if i do choose to go that way wow here's another card right here an original base set hollow nitto king Another one that's hard to find. That's cool. So I think we're starting to get to some big cards right here. All right. Oh, here we go. Speaking of which, Mewtwo holographic. That's really cool. Look at that. This is taking me back right here. These, these must be the, because uh, there's a stack of them right here. This is really cool. Wow, speaking of which, here you go. First edition Machamp Hollow. Wow, look at that. First edition. I don't have many first edition hollows, so this is really cool. Really, really cool. Wow. Oh, and I was speaking of all the fighting characters. Here's Hitmochan. Don't know why this is not in the plastic, but very cool. Look at that. These are the beauties. 
So now going into some uh, fossil first editions. Here's an Omastar. I always like this character. I don't know why. First edition Magmar. That's really cool. Um, we got some other first editions. Just going through here real quick. Here's a nice one. Non-holographic, but it is a first edition. Raichu. Oh, here's another Snorlax. Wow. Non-holographic. Um, jungle Snorlax. Oh, and here's the first edition. First edition. Jungle Snorlax. There is a tiny little crease there. You can probably see near his belly. Um, oh, here's a wiggly tough. There you go, holographic. Does have that little bit of warping there from just sitting there over the over the years. Another cool character. Wow. Kangaskhan. Look at that. So I've hit the mother load right here. Kangaskhan. And one of my favorite characters. This is an original holographic Alakazam. Look at that. Wow. Got to take this one out. That is really cool. Look at that thing pop. And, oh, speaking of which, another OG, Blastoise. This one suffers from the, uh, <laughs> as you can see, the scratching there on the top of the name of the foil. So, uh, but still, this is, you can tell this was played. These cards I did play with. I played with them at the tournaments. It's just really cool to see these cards. Here's um, another rare. Here's a pincer, non-hollow, followed by a pincer hollow. A Clee Fable. Wow, there you go, holographic. A lot of these... Um, what do you call them? The neutral Pokemon? I don't know what they're called. But, you know, I'm talking, when I say my neutral, I mean these, these. This class right here. These grayish color were quite hard to find. You know, so to see these again were actually pretty cool. You know, the, the four big ones were uh, Snorlax, Clefable, Wigglytuff, and a Kangaskhan. So these are really cool to see. Oh, there's a oh, there you go, a victory bell, a holographic from the Jungle series. Another Kangaskhan, non-hollow. There's another one, Clee Fable, non-hollow. Wow, these are these are just this is crazy. I don't know if you can see from <laughs> the excitement I'm from these cards, just to see these cards. After all these years, is is just amazing. So I'm gonna put these as, aside because these are probably the most valuable that I've seen thus far, and I don't think I'm gonna get anything more valuable than what I've just showed. Because like I said, I do not have a Charizard. I've never owned a Charizard, so that would be obviously the most expensive. But these also do are pricey. So the next section I have here, just going through these real quick. These are all very commons, you know, Sea King and Tauros and Mankey. Oh, here's another um, uh, Hypno holographic that just popped up. Oh, cool. Here we go. Here's some of these older um, fossils. This was particularly a hard one to find. This was the uh, Kabutops, as you can see there from the top near his name, there is a crease there, so that will drop the value quite a bit, but still really cool to see. Speaking of a rare one, this is uh, Zapdos. And this is the holographic. These are, I remember now, they're starting to come back to me, the Zapdos, the um, Articuno, and uh, forget the other, the Redbird, were quite hard to get. I think those were some of the prizes from those packs. 
is an Aerodactyl non-hollow. That's a rare. Another one, uh, Aerodactyl non-hollow. Oh, here's speaking of Articuno. Here you go. Here's an Articuno, but non-holographic. Very cool to see. And this character, I always found really, uh, really, really funny and mysterious. Going back to the whole neutral color um, Pokemon was the uh, Ditto. <laughs> this is always one of the hardest ones to find out, at least in my opinion. But I do have one. And speaking of rare um, neutral Pokemon is Dragonite. That is cool. Look at that illustration. <laughs> Non-holographic, but still really cool. Really cool to see. Here's another one. Oh, another uh, a tough one to get at the time. This was uh, Gengar. Some cool cards coming up right here. Here's a Hitman Lee. Oh, two. Two Hitman Lee non-holographics. Here's another Kabutops non-holographic, but in much better condition than the holographic one. This must be all the rares I have over here. Jeez. Here's a Lapras. Like I said, these are all pretty tough to find. Lapras, non-holographic, and I actually I have, wow, I have three. Really cool. Um, here's a Megaton, or Megaton, that's a, that's a comic book. Megneton. <laughs> it was a rare non-holographic. Oh, speaking of the Red Bird, I couldn't think of the name. It's Moltres. I do have, so I remember having all three. And, but I think the uh, the yellow one was the only holographic one I had. So there's all three of the birds. There's uh, a muck. This is pretty funny. A muck rare. Raichu is another Raichu. Raichu. And these are, one's a first edition. First edition, one's non-first edition. Really cool. All in fantastic condition. Oh, we got two more Zapdos and uh, non holographic in very nice conditions. Look at that. So, this, these last two stacks have had some big cards in here. Let me just scroll through these pretty quickly to see if there's any other rare stuff on here. Two more Magmars. Love this character. There's something about it. I don't know. Some Cedras, some Slow Bros. Uh, just going through these quickly. Some more Grimers and Horsies. All right, so that's that stack right there. Some really cool cards I just showed off. Like I said, these are all bringing back some really nice memories. Um, and going on. So if you like this, feel free to give me a thumbs up. I know this is going to be a rather long video, but like I said, I'm going through like basically my. OG, you know, collection. This is my entire collection of uh, Pokemon cards, spanning a few different, uh, few different runs from the uh, base set to the Fossil Jungle, and then the second base set, and a little bit of Rocket, and a little bit of Japanese. So, um, going through my next section here, there's some more commons, and. Uh, you see nothing in particular, but they're all essentially first editions. All these first editions, um, fossil cards, first editions, tentacle, Zubats, and some uh, Japanese cards, of course. Oh, there we go. Here's a promo. A promo Mewtwo. It's really cool. And uh, Japanese, to finish off that section, Japanese Porygon. All right, so moving on, it looks like I have one last stack. And um, I think that is it. I think I've gone through all these. Let me just make sure. This is says fight. This one says fight on here. So let me just make sure I went through these already. Yes, I did. Okay, so I don't want to do a duplicate section because I've been putting it back in the box as I go. This is my last section of the collection. 
I'm guessing it's going to be a lot of commons and something specific. This one, this says, looks like a lot of blue. All right. So let's see. Got a lot of fossil. A lot of fossil. Is a Japanese polywhirl. Pretty cool. Kinglers, a lot of Kinglers, almost stars, some Cedras. Like I said, these are all big duplicates. At some point or another, I stacked them all together just to make it easy to sort through. Some uh, Shelders, Dugongs, you know, probably has some more regular Polywhirls. I see something coming up because I see a bag. Let's see what I got over here. Oh, cool. All right. So I got a Team Rocket Dark. Gyarados. I never, I don't believe I ever owned a regular base set Gyarados, or if I did, I probably traded it at some point when I was playing. So that's cool to see that. And um, I think there's one more in here. And I think that will wrap it up. Oh, yes. Here we go. Here's a much better condition Blastoise. Than the one I saw I showed off previously. This is from the base set number two. But as you can see, it's in much better condition than the previous Blastoise, which I think I have right over here as well. So I can show you quickly to compare it. So let me see if I can quickly grab that, because then that will end that section. There we go. Sorry for that delay there. So you can see the big difference between the two. There's the first edition versus the second edition. So you can see there is a lot of scratching on the first. And then the second one presents much more nice. That. It's a much nicer copy than the first edition. So uh, thanks for bearing with me if you watch this whole thing through. I really appreciate it. Like I said, this is like uh, like opening up a big like time capsule, seeing your original collection from when you were a kid. You know, I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. If you haven't already, uh, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share the content, and if you. Uh, haven't already entered the Road to 500 subscriber contest, uh, please do. It's a pretty easy contest to do. Um, getting closer, added a bunch of new subscribers within the last two days, so I appreciate those new subscribers. And uh, until next time, it's Mark Spectre Comics. Out.